If you want to read this article, you can do so at justinstelman.com forward slash A8. Trading your time for money is a sucker's bet. There's one phrase that rubs me the wrong way. It's the phrase, time is money. I'd venture to say that time is not money and it never has been. Time is an incredibly deep subject that nobody has fully figured out yet, although people like Brian Greene and quantum mechanics and physicists have been able to make some sort of sense of what time is. Time is something and money is something and they are not the same thing. But you could say that time is money if you live in a fear-based paradigm driven by a market economy and unconscious capitalism. You can't go to the farm or to the farmer in Brazil and tell him that time is money because I've been there. If you are currently trading time for money, you're in a very precious and sub- subsequently unstable position. I contend that this applies if you're an hourly employee or a salaried executive. You're still trading your time for money. The more hours you work, the more money you make. Or if you're a salaried worker, the more hours you work results in increased stock options or year-end bonuses. Like I said, either way you slice it, you're trading your time for money. This is the worst position you could be in. Time is the most valuable asset we have. We can never get it back once it's gone. Ask any dad who's missed the birth of a child or a mom who has missed their son's school play because she had to work overtime to meet a client deadline. Can you think of times in your past where you could have spent your time differently? We all have those moments. Personally, I know there have been a couple of times where I fought with Kate and I wish I could go back and change what I said. I can think of a family friend who got paralyzed in a skiing accident. Do you think he wishes he could go back and choose not to go down that final run? Until a new technology exists where we can go back in time and change how we made decisions, we simply cannot go back into the past on a physical level and alter events. I know there were, I know there were times I wish I had spent less time working at the office late into the evening. I wish, I wish I could get that back, but I can't. What's done is done. Time is precious, so please don't trade it for money. Whatever you make from your job, it still pales in comparison to what time is worth. Right now, you are the youngest you'll ever be as well as the oldest you ever were. These two realities collide into some sort of zero point called the now. Right now is all that exists, so use it wisely. Steve Jobs says, your time is limited, so don't waste it living somebody else's life. Time is a... Is some sort of real thing, and money, on the other hand, is a made-up agreement on the value we place on ones and zeros. I remember the days when I'd drive to work on cold winter mornings as the sun was coming up and wondering, what am I doing? I hated my job. The hours were too long, the pay was dreadful, and I didn't get get along with my boss. What was I doing? Why did I put myself through that just for money? Money or the lack thereof causes people to do strange things in the midst of their own consciousness tell them that what they're doing is ridiculous. I can remember working multiple jobs for minimum wage. It was horrible. For a while, I worked three jobs at once. When I was 25, I I worked at a storage unit. My duties there included making sure locks were on all the doors. Uh, Multiple times during my shifts, I would install lights, paint curbs, clean out the old storage units, and do my best from getting yelled at by my boss. It was not the highlight of my life. After my shift at the storage unit, I'd go straight to a pizza shop to deliver pizzas to the local rich people who couldn't be bothered to fire up the old Lamborghini and pick it up themselves. Maybe I'd make a couple bucks from the tips they'd give me if they were nice. I'd spend more money in gas than I'd make during my shift. It wasn't worth my time or my energy. It was incredibly stressful in a toxic environment. Plus, I don't like delivering food to people that I knew was contributing to disease. Bad karma. On days I wasn't pulling double shifts at the storage unit and delivering pizza, I'd work constructions and be up at 5 a.m. digging holes in the cold uh, eight hours a day. It was bad. It was horrible. The entire time I had those horrible jobs, all I wanted to do was find my own path in life. All that I could think about was how I could create something online that helps people and get paid for it. I struggled so much during those times. I was obsessed with getting out of that downward spiral and finding whatever it was that I was supposed to do in life. Tony Robbins says, everybody is a financial trader. Most people are trading time for money. It's the worst trade of one's life. I felt like Bono when he sings that song called, I Still Haven't Found What I'm Looking For. 
I knew what I wanted out of life, and where, and I hated my job, but I also had no idea what I wanted to do. Have you been there? It's a helpless feeling and a, and a hopeless place to be in, and I'm so grateful things have changed. It's just so unsettling to know you don't want a job you hate, but have no idea what you do want. Not only are you unsure of what you want, you don't even know how to make something happen either. At 25 years old and with a wedding coming up, I've just felt hopeless. I absolutely hated where my life was and where it was going. I knew I had to do something different. I continued this to struggle along for a couple more years until a friend gave me a book called Fit for Life. Everything changed for me after I read that. It's, it definitely wasn't a get-rich-quick type of scenario. Now that I found something I was passionate about, helping people with health issues, I had to go through a nine-year apprentice period. During that time, I attended lectures, I read many more books, I watched movies, went to seminars and on how to use natural principles to improve health. I was blown away by the fact that it's possible to heal cancer naturally, and nobody knew about it. It seemed as if people were walking around the streets, had a veil over their eyes, and they had no idea that any of this was possible. The haze of self-induced programming over people is as thick as glass. So for nine years, I consumed everything I could get my hands on, learning about spirituality, nutrition, longevity, personal development, and it changed my life on just about every level. It was a complete saturation dump on my consciousness. I took in information all day, every day on these life-changing topics. It was also an emotional, spiritual, and physical cleansing time for me. But in terms of how I earned a living during that time, I still radically struggled and ended up trading all my time for money. I had all this passion and interest about a subject on the side, but I was very much struggling financially. Then, in August of 2002, I decided to launch Extreme Health Radio. Everything changed at that point. After many months of doing the show, we're still not earning any money from it, but there was some, at least some hope of doing so. The show was growing and people were writing in saying how much it has changed their life, so I knew I was on the right track. I never wanted to get rich from it or even thought about money at all. Yes, I'd hoped that one day we could make it our full-time job, but as I kept after it, it continued to grow and eventually became something we could depend on to pay our bills. It now provides about 90% of our income and it's still growing and building. The best part about it is that I'm able to help people do the work that I love and earn enough money to live. What's most important to me is allowing people to see that there are options when it comes to their own healing. I share all that with you, not to brag, but to let you know it's possible. It's possible to do the work you love and stop trading time for money. Put systems in place. It's all about systems. There's nothing better than waking up in the morning and getting a donation from a listener letting us know how much our show has opened their eyes and changed their life. Often there will be times where Kate and I would be driving along some distance and we get a notification that somebody purchased a sauna on a Sunday afternoon. How cool is that? But when you trade time for money, there's a limit to how much money you can earn. There are only a certain amount of hours in a day in order to do your work. And even if you could extend the amount of hours in a day, you only have so much energy to be able to do that work itself. A while ago, I read a book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. And that book talked about putting systems in place to make money while you're not working. And that made complete sense to me. All the wealthiest people in the world work this way. A famous music band might spend nine months working on an album, and when it's released, they could make millions. Taking away the upfront money given to them from their record label, their advance, that pays for their expenses to live during this, its creation, the band is essentially working for free. So now, if you were to compare their income during that nine-month period to somebody who is a corporate, corporate executive, any rational person would say that, they're doing, that what they're doing makes zero financial sense. The corporate executive could have made $250,000 in that nine-month span, whereas the band would have made almost nothing. But once that hit album is released, not only could they make millions, but they will earn money from that album for years or even decades into the future. If that CEO gets sick and can no longer work, he'd better have a 401 retirement plan set up because he's unable to earn any more money. This isn't the case when you put systems in place. Imagine getting paid for the rest of your life for something you produce today. Now that's leverage. 
I trained five years in Gracie Jiu Jitsu about a decade ago. Jiu Jitsu allows small guys to defeat much larger opponents by using this idea called leverage. Through a series of joint locks and chokes, smaller people actually have a chance of defeating guys who weigh hundreds of pounds more than they do. Grandmaster Elio Gracie once said, Give me the right leverage and I'll move the world. When you're trading time for money, you're on the wrong side of leverage. Once your service is performed and you're paid for it, that transaction is done. It's a one-time service for a one-time payment. What you need to do is create something that earns money for you years in, into the future. This is something you could do on the side that improves, that involves your passion. This is what I did. Before I had the tools and knowledge to start my own radio show, I had to first go through a learning process, much like a trade school or a college. But in my case, it took nine years of learning about my passion to finally wake up and realize I could put it all together, my passion and my computer skills, and earn money from it. I could have started much earlier, but the technology just wasn't there yet. I always say everything in its own time. For you, it could be much sooner than nine years. How I monetize my venture. When I was first starting, I was so deeply living the life of somebody involved in natural health that I already had used and knew about all the best health tools on the market. So when I first started, I bought the tools that I wanted to, wanted to affiliate to on our show and I actually used them. I tried them and put them through my own litmus test. I asked myself a series of questions about all these products. Were they high, were they high quality? Did they live up to their claims? Did they have a pr profound impact on my own health? Would they be suitable products our listeners would like? Many of them were good, but not the standard I wanted to get behind. And yet, many of them were excellent. And these were the products I affiliated with and now offer on our website, Extreme Health Radio. During the show, we will sometimes break for commercials, and I'll talk about my experience with these products and let people know where they can buy them on our website. The show is now three years old, and I still get emails from people who found our show just a few days ago, but listen to a show we did three years ago. People can go through our old archives and listen to any of our past shows. Many of these new listeners bought a product during the middle of the night when I was sleeping. There's a quote that says, the wealthy have learned how to do the work once or for a very short time and they keep getting paid for that, that effort over and over again, continually, month after month, year after year. There's no smarter way to earn a living than that, but it's not easy. You have to build an audience, gain their trust and offer them amazing content. You can, do, you can do this by writing, like I'm doing here, through radio shows, YouTube videos, digital products, like online courses or eBooks. There are dozens and dozens of ways to produce great content and get paid for it. The trick is you have to be passionate about what you're creating. If people see that you're trying to make money from them, they'll sniff that out really easily. People these days are getting more and more computer savvy with each passing day. And why would you want to... Take something without first offering incredible value anyway. You also have to be willing to go through the trenches. I wouldn't quit, I wouldn't quit your day job for at least two years unless you get really lucky and your project takes off from the beginning. It should be a passion you do on the side, but you slowly offer more and more value to people until you can quit your job because your passion is making you more than your real job is making you. Being in control of your time. The real reason I do Extreme Health Radio is to help people and let them know they have options when it comes to their health and their healing. In order to keep taking your health to new levels, you need time. I do so many things in a day to take care of myself, it's pretty ridiculous. I'll take long walks along the beach while listening to inspiring speakers. I'll read during the day, do a daily sauna and a rebounding session along with working out at least three times a week in the gym. And that doesn't even count making and preparing superfoods, herbs, and teas in the kitchen. If I worked at a job full time, I wouldn't have time to put into these daily practices. And it's the experience from these daily practices that I get to share on the show and on the website. People benefit because I've been able to merge my career with something I'm actually already passionate about. For me, it's a lifestyle. I've been at it since 2003 and work on not just myself, but on my business every single day. We might go a few days without making any sales, but then we might make enough to earn a bit of money to pay for the next month's worth of living. 
When you are called to do your purpose, God meets you at the intersection where opportunity and preparation collide. It's like you're in the middle of a hurricane at that zero point. The outside world thinks you're nuts for doing what you're doing. All you can see is chaos all around you. But when you step out of that world into doing what you're passionate about, everything turns silent and suddenly you're in that zone. I call it the holy flow, where time ends and full attention makes hours seem like minutes. When you get to that state, you've figured out what your real passion is. Once you have a handle on what it is you'd like to do, which is the hardest thing to figure out, by the way, then you have to figure out a way to monetize it so you can keep doing that. If you get rich off of it, cool. If not, that's cool too because you're not in it to be rich. Money isn't the motivation that keeps you doing it during those lean years. You do it because you love it. As you keep at it and develop your craft, people will begin to notice. All of a sudden, you can work your ass off and earn money, and I call them freedom, freedom units, for years to come. A perfect example of this is my friend Ty Bollinger. He's been on our show a couple times, and he's really into helping people reverse cancer using natural methods. His whole life is devoted to this one cause, which is so great. He'll travel the world for three months to 20 different countries, sleeping in hotels, driving around in taxis, and working all hours of the day recording video interviews with the world's experts on healing cancer naturally. Then he'll come back three months later and hand all of that video footage off to his graphic designers and producers. Then they'll make all that available in what's called an online summit for everyone to watch for free. During any particular summit, there might be 12 hour-long episodes. Each episode is then freely available to watch for 24 hours until the next episode is released, replacing the one before it. Then after 12 days, people can choose to buy the entire event which with tons of bonus footage for a nominal price. Here's somebody working for free, getting paid nothing for nine months, and then makes it all back and then some after the event is over. He's making a great living doing these summits, and he gets paid to help change the world. Finding your passion. Sometimes we figure out what we're passionate about from negative experiences in our lives or from our own curiosity and creativity that never left us after childhood. For Ty and for me, it was family members having cancer that really opened our eyes to what's really going on and realized there had to be a better way to heal. But some kids are inventors and they're constantly spending time in the garage inventing gadgets. For other people, it could be sports, writing, acting, singing, creating videos, or all of that stuff combined. This is where the real heart of your quest will come from. What is it you love to do? Maybe open your eyes up and expand your passions out a bit. If you love baseball and happen to be a great writer, but you can't play that well, maybe consider writing a website about baseball. Maybe you can get involved in coaching baseball or even product development and coming up with new creative ideas for equipment that would help players perform better. Being able to control your time and environment is true freedom. Making enough money to be able to have that freedom is one of the healthiest things you could ever do. You know how unhealthy it is to go through the stress of a job. That's not good for your longevity or for your goals. If you can figure out what you're passionate about and think about ways where you can make a living from something that involves that passion, you're at square one. Next, you need to figure out how you want to set up and design your life. What's most important to you? Do you want to work 12-hour days and never get to have be married or have kids? Then that needs to be part of the equation. On the flip side, do you want to be able to have time to take care of yourself like I do each day? Or maybe you want to be able to set up a business that allows you to travel and experience the world. Find out what kind of lifestyle you want and then figure out how to merge that with your new idea to monetize your passion. In 10 years, you don't want to be doing something you're still doing now, only wishing you had taken some kind of action to create a better life. If you chip away at something in small daily chunks, you could be involved in a whole new career of your choice in just a couple years. So close your eyes and imagine yourself 15 to 20 years from now and ask yourself, what do you wish you could have done during that time? Are there any regrets? Did you spend money wisely or unwisely? Did you start that business you wanted to start or did you waste time on meaningless pursuits? Trading your time for money is a sucker's bet and the fastest way to poverty and constant reliance on a job for your ability to live. Find a way out of that matrix by taking baby steps every single day and eventually you'll get there. But whatever you do, 
don't buy into the lie that you can keep on trading time for money forever because eventually it'll catch up with you. If you want to read or comment on this article and check out the images 